I was sitting in my library one night and it felt like the house was moving. And I turned to my husband and I said to him, do you feel the house moving? And he said, it's not the house, Carol, it's you. The Movement Disorder Centre at Toronto Western Hospital is actually the biggest movement disorder centre in North America. We have seven full-time movement disorders experts that each cover a different uh, component or a different piece of the research puzzle from the clinical side, from the diagnostic and therapeutic side, to the understanding of brain function through electrophysiology, to uh, pharmacology. We have probably at any one time more than 30 active studies going on. A lot of them are not funded because we're just interested in them. And I think the main reason why I decided to leave the beautiful Italy and to come to Canada was really to have the opportunity to work with a great team in uh, Toronto. Uh, Toronto is quite famous, I think, everywhere for the uh, quality of research and the quality of this movement disorder team. It's depressing. It's, um because you can't even do the simple things of life, go and do some grocery shopping or some clothes for the kids or whatever it may be. And uh, there comes a point where you just don't want to go out. I don't think you can ask intelligent research questions without understanding the disease that is, as it impacts on living patients and patients that uh, have to deal with the disability on a daily basis. focusing on finding new surgical treatment for movement disorders, in particular Parkinson's disease. So I start studying the impact of different no, uh, parameters of electricity in the clinical symptoms. Does it make the tremor better? Does it make the tremor worse? Focusing on the quality of uh, the result. Tell us if you feel something eh, before we see it. Easier, right? It's not so stiff. Can you feel it? Yes. Our hopes are that we're going to do that much better in the future with drugs, but right now we don't. And this is where deep brain stimulation really has provided almost a godsend to the patients that uh, uh, benefit from it. Well, the impact after surgery was um, night and day, probably. I, I could run. Actually, I could do start jogging again and um, playing with my children and functioning more as a father and a person in society, right? focus mostly on neuroimaging or brain imaging. We are able to detect abnormalities in certain parts of the brain that are responsible for Parkinson's disease. We are really on the cutting edge of technology, and that's for sure. So we can ask questions about how the disease progresses within the dopamine system and how it changes and how the earliest manifestations develop. Just go for a walk and go to window, window shopping or things uh -huh. like that. And she, she so my particular area of interest is palliative care for Parkinson's and other degenerative disorders. Uh, so uh, the clinical work has certainly helped me see that there are areas in later stage Parkinson's disease that are often missed. Because in Parkinson's disease, we're always thinking about keeping the patient moving, keeping them walking. In later stages, that focus often needs to be shifted somewhat because we have to think about, are we impacting their mood or their thinking by giving them so much medication to keep them moving? And what is important to the patient? When yeah. the family says, so I want to always happy. Yeah. She does sleep. She recognizes them. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. And there are very few palliative care programs. Dr. Miyazaki has developed one of the first in the world, recognizing that we have to provide a holistic approach to the management of our patients. 
in the short term, my hope is that we continue to have the success we've had in expanding the envelope, pushing those boundaries of knowledge, questioning established dogma, trying to think of new ways to approach the illnesses that we care for. In the longest term, I think we're going to see a better understanding of the underlying biology. We're going to understand what's happening in the cells, why are the cells damaged, why are they dying, and how can we step in to prevent them from continuing to progressively die. The ultimate hope, of course, is that we find a cure for Parkinson's disease and we find the answer about what causes or starts the illness. And that would lead to implications not only for Parkinson's disease, but for a vast array of illnesses such as Alzheimer's, Huntington's disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease. You leave an appointment with Dr. Lang feeling like, yes, you know, we're, we're, we're a team here. There's a, there's a whole team behind me helping me feel well and giving me the strength to carry on and get on with my life and not to give up.